Good morning. And we welcome you to our service this morning. A few announcements before we begin. Confirmation and youth group will resume this week. Uh, actually resumed last week, but and then there's church council this Thursday. Uh, the Wednesday deadline is this Friday, and guys are meeting at, at McHale's this week on Saturday. The council is applying for a health and wellness grant, and so they would like some ideas. Uh, you can read about it in the bulletin there, but if you have any ideas for classes that would fall under health and wellness, then uh, be sure and contact Vicki. No, that's the next one. Contact any council member or the church office. And contact Vicki or Vanjie if you want to go on the mystery trip. And that's coming up real, real quick here. Uh, there are scholarships available for those who are going on to higher learning. And that's back on the usher's counter if you need that. And then there are a few other announcements that I'm just going to leave for your own. So are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? If not, then let us begin our service by singing hymn number 72, We Will Glorify, number 72. Would you rise, please? Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us a shepherd to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
The first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20, and this is found on page 1706 in your pew Bibles. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priests to arrest all that call in your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Uh, the second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapters 5, verses 11 through 14. And this is found on page 1918 in your pew Bibles. Then I looked and heard voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth and on the sea, and all that is in them singing, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Afterward, Jesus again appeared to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going fishing, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they, re they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat, and then you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. 
As soon as Simon Peter heard him say this, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciple followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals, and there were some fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring me some of the fish you have caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many in the net, it was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dare ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This is now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Simon, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Less, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. A third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to Peter, follow me. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated as I ask the children to come forward. Actually, I was going to do a different song, but I changed my mind because it is Easter and I haven't had a chance to do a good Easter song with you. How many of you know the song Bingo? That's not an Easter song, is it? But if we change the words around a little bit, we can sing it and make it into an Easter song. Invite the congregation to sing along as we sing. The tomb was empty Easter morn and Jesus is alive, oh. Here we go. The tomb was empty Easter morn, and Jesus is alive. Oh, J E S U S, J E S U S, J E S U S, and Jesus is alive. Oh, who sang in bingo was his name? <laughs> okay. Now, you know how it's supposed to work. This time, instead of saying the J, you clap. So the tomb was empty Easter morn, and Jesus is alive. The tomb was empty Easter morn, and Jesus is alive, oh. E-S-U-S, 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 and Jesus is alive, oh. Now you clap for the J and the E. Here we go. The tomb is empty Easter morn, and Jesus is alive, oh. S-U-S, 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 and Jesus is alive. Oh, all three, but let's go a little bit faster. The tomb was empty Easter morning. Jesus is alive. Oh, U-S, 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 and Jesus is alive. Oh, and now we do J clap, 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 S. Are you ready? The tomb was empty Easter morning. Jesus is alive, oh. Yes. Yes. Yes, and Jesus is alive, oh. And now we clap all five. The tomb was empty Easter morning. Jesus is alive, oh. And Jesus is 
alive. Oh, and now we'll do it and say all the words and not clap. The letters, excuse me. The tomb was empty Easter morning. Jesus is alive. Oh, J E S U S J E S U S J E S U S and Jesus is alive. Oh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that each Sunday we remember that you have risen from the dead for us. You gave your life for our sake. You rose from the dead to set us free from death. So we have nothing to fear in life or death. And we look forward to that day when we can thank you in person. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you very much. So here I am, James, son of Zebedee, brother of John, fisherman by trade, disciple by calling, witness to the resurrection by the grace of God, and once again, fisherman by the process of elimination. Man, it's cold out here and wet. Not like the hot, dry days on the road, that's for sure. But at least there aren't any box elder bugs out here, or Chinese beetles, or any other kind of pesky bugs people talk about. Right, no bugs, no fish either. You'd think that between the seven of us, we could have come up with something, but here we are, at it all night, and so far, zilch. I mean, if I catch the one I'm after and the two more after that, I'll have three. Funny to think that just a few days ago, we would have been happy to be in this boat, fish or no fish. As it was, we were up the creek without a paddle. What with Jesus being captured, then tried, then put to death. I'll tell you, we were in a bad way. I kind of had the feeling that if we weren't really, really careful, we'd be the next ones to go. Some of the women had come to the tomb and said it was empty. Mary even said that she had seen Jesus and he was alive. What's that, Peter? Time to pull in the nets again? Oh, you're right, it does feel a little heavier this time. Let's see what we got. An old boot, ball tire, part of a bed frame, and a license plate from North Dakota. But no fish. Oh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Mary, she said she'd seen Jesus alive. But did we believe her? What a bunch of dummies we were. I mean, Jesus told us he was going to die and then be raised up again. But do you think that we'd believed him? Not likely. Maybe. Maybe in those days, headed up to Jerusalem, we didn't want to believe that he was going to die. I know Peter sure didn't believe it. Me neither, too. I guess since we couldn't believe that he was going to die, how could we believe that he was going to live? And without Jesus as our leader and teacher, where were we? I know where we were, like rats hiding in their holes, that's where we were, shaking in our sandals. But then Jesus, all of a sudden, he was right there, right smack dab in the middle of us, right there saying, peace be with you. You know, Jesus, you didn't have to say it. Because when you showed up like that, I felt more peace than I had felt for a long time, especially for the previous three days. But to see him in that room alive again, I'll tell you, I felt like I was alive again. And then he said, I'm sending you just like the Father sent me. 
Hey, John, get a load of Thomas over there. Looks like he hasn't taken too well to the fishing business, if you catch my drift. Ever since he missed seeing Jesus with the rest of us that first time, he hasn't let us out of our sight, or out of his sight. He's been hanging around like afraid that he'll miss something. What's that, John? Yeah, me too. I was surprised that a carpenter like him would come fishing with us. Yeah, I guess you're right. But he is looking a little green around the gills. And speaking of gills, let's have another look in the net. Still nothing. Why am I not surprised? Now, what was I think? Oh yeah, as the Father sent me, so I sent you. Send you. That's what Jesus told us. But I wish he would have been a little more specific. Like where he was sending us. And when. I mean, there we were, waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, Peter, he says, enough of this already. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going fishing. And the way he said it, I knew he wasn't just talking about going up to the cabin for the weekend, going up to Mille Lacs. And to tell you the truth, I felt the same way myself. I mean, life must go on. And Jesus didn't say when or even if he was coming back. And a fellow's got to make a living. And I thought, Peter thought, the other fellows thought that the something to do was fishing. I mean, after all, fishing is an honorable trade. It's good hard work. You don't make a lot usually, but you have a good appetite. You sleep good, and you know what you're doing is honest. Uh, honest, as long as you keep your thumb off the scale anyway. I like fishing. And Peter, he said, fishing is a good enough life. Although I kind of got the idea that his heart wasn't in it. Well, if his heart wasn't in it then, I sure don't think his heart is in it now. This doesn't seem to be where he really wants to be, what he wants to do. My heart sure isn't in it now either. I think we could catch more fish in the upper room. Hey guys, what say we call it a day? I mean, it's almost dawn, and I don't think our luck is going to get any better. If we can't catch them at night, we're sure not going to catch them during the day. What's that, Nathaniel? Somebody on the beach? Where? I don't see it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, now I see him. Man, he's out early. Must be a jogger or something. What's he saying, Peter? Throw our nets on the right side of the boat? Huh. Who's he kidding? This boat doesn't have a right side, only wrong sides. I think the best place for our nets right now is on the inside, if you know what I'm saying. But okay, Peter, it's your boat. I just don't know how he's going to see him from there if we can't see him from <gasps> fish. Look, fish, fish, lots of fish, big fish, little fish, black, white, yellow fish, fish. Where'd they come from? They weren't here, here a minute ago. Look at all the fish. How did he know that there were fish there? I haven't seen anything like this since, since, John, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'm thinking what you're thinking, and if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, it's got to be the, oh, Peter, get back in the boat. Come back here and help us. Where do you think you're going anyway? Oh, he can't hear me. He's halfway to shore already. Come on, guys. Start rowing. We'll never get these fish in the boat without bringing in the whole lake, too. It's only a hundred yards, so we'll drag them in. But let's hurry. Jesus is back. Hey, John. I don't know why Peter was in such an all-fired hurry to see Jesus. I mean, after all, it was Peter's idea to go fishing in the first place. Is he in such a hurry to be a disciple again that he couldn't take the boat in with the rest of us? 
What's that you say, John? Well, now that you mention it, I'd like to be a disciple again, too. I mean, fishing and all, what's not to like about it? It's what I grew up with. It was my father's trade, my grandfather's trade, and my great-grandfather's trade. And as far as I know, it was his great-grandfather's trade, too. It's a good life, fishing. But I don't have to tell you there's more to life than fishing. There's more to life than just earning a living. I mean, if life was just get up, go to work, come home, eat, sleep, get married, raise a family, and finally die, if that's all there was to life, then maybe I'd just fish. But once a person has met Jesus, has heard him talk about the kingdom of God, about how we're to serve others like he served us, I once heard a fellow oh, I lost my place. <laughs> I once heard a fellow talk about forgiveness of sins and how he won forgiveness by his dying and rising. Well, once you've heard all that, you know that God didn't intend for us just to live our lives in our own little corner of the world with our own little cares and concerns. It's like Martin Luther once said, in Christ we are set free, but it is the freedom to serve God and our fellow human being. What's that, John? Well, now that you mention it, I don't know who Martin Luther is either. It just kind of came to me, you know. But I like the thought, free in Christ to serve God and our fellow human beings. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. You know, I could probably still fish. There's nothing wrong with fishing. But I couldn't just fish. Not after meeting Jesus. With all I know about his dying and raising, I gotta be his disciple. What's that, John? Yeah, you're right. I guess Peter must have felt that way too. You know, it's funny. Peter started out last night with a question. Don't rush me, I'm getting to it. The question was, to fish or not to fish? And for a while, it looked like the answer was to fish. And it occurred to me that for the rest of us, the question was to fish or not to fish. Or for Thomas, it was to build or not to build. And for Matthew, to collect taxes, or not to collect taxes. And I guess everybody has to ask that question in their own way. But I hope that other people come up with the same answer that we have. We may fish or not fish, but whatever we do, we are still Jesus' disciples. And somehow, we ought to be serving him whatever else we do. Must be a pretty good net Peter has here all these fish, and it doesn't show one little sign of strain. Do with them? Leave them for now. I think Jesus has something cooking up on the beach for us. Let's go see. Let's pray. Lord, help us, whatever we do, to also serve you. You spread us through society by our occupations, that we might be in contact with people who need to hear a word of hope, a word of promise, a word of forgiveness and of life. So Lord, help us, whatever we do, to also be your disciples, wherever you put us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn is in the Green Hymnal, number 363, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing.
Please turn to the back of your bulletins or to the screen as we join together in our response to the word. Would you rise, please? In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The almighty and merciful God grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another the peace of the Lord. Please be seated as the ushers receive our offering. And a special thank you to everybody who came to the workday yesterday and helped make the church look so nice. Thank you.
Please join with me in the offer. Merciful God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you. And with the church through all the ages, we give thanks for saving love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, as we gather together in this resurrection celebration, we ask that we might follow your Son, Jesus our Lord. We pray for those who preach the word, especially for our bishop and our clergy, that they may follow the traditions of Paul and Barnabas and speak boldly to build up all people. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for churches throughout the world that we may all experience unity and follow your Son. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world that they may turn from oppression, imperialism, and warfare and seek the good of all people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the homeless, the hungry, and the sick that they may find comfort in the one who shelters us with his holy presence and guides us to springs of living water and wipes away tears from our eyes. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all mothers and those who give motherly care, that they may follow your example and lead their children. Lord, in your mercy. We offer our prayers, those that we pray silently and also these particular prayers, asking that you would send your help, comfort. We pray for Natal the family of Natalie Michaelis, the infant daughter that passed away, and for Lauren Irwin, who is home from the hospital for recovery. Also for Steve Stulen, who is recovering from back surgery. We pray for the family of Tim Olin, that they might be comforted at his passing, and also for Shirley Hendrickson's family, for that also. We pay, pray with thanksgiving for Chrissy, the Sandgren's granddaughter, whose surgery was successful. And we pray for your healing for Elaine Roberg's cousin, Zane Irwin, who had a stroke. These and the prayers that we offer, we set before you, asking that you would give your mercy, especially to these people. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the apostles, Barnabas and Paul and all the saints that have gone before us and set for us examples of how to live for you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is from the Green Hymnal, number 525, Blessing and Honor. Peace, serve the Lord.